Hey, Pat Rigsby here, and in today's episode, I want to talk with you about the ideal business client assessment. Let's get started. Welcome to the Fitness Business School podcast, the show for fitness business owners who want to grow their income, increase their impact, and improve their lifestyle. Be sure to listen till the end of this episode because we have a brand new special offer exclusive for listeners. So stay tuned. Back a month or so ago, as I record this episode, we we started doing something called the Ideal Business Client Assessment. And it is essentially the same way that you might do an assessment, an FMS or whatever assessment kind of protocol you use with a client. And you can do it with somebody early on to identify... Um, you know, what they need to work on, how they need to improve. You can, you can do it with somebody who's an existing client to see what kind of improvements they've, they've made and what, how they may need to change to keep improving. And so we've taken that kind of same approach and started to make this ideal business client assessment available to our clients. And then even we've started to extend it out to other people because I think that one of the things that I look back on er, early in my journey as a business owner is I just didn't know what I didn't know. And by being able to go through an assessment, you can say, okay, here are the areas I'm strong. Here are the areas I need to catch up on and, and, and improve so I can have a solid foundation so that I can build and not implode, so to speak, because I'm building and not having blind spots and it, it's it, it started off so well that it's going to be one of those things that we make is a, a, a true pillar in our coaching programs moving forward and I think that we'll continue to make it available to people whether it's in virtual fitness mastermind that entryway program to getting help and support from us or even for people like listeners of this podcast, if they want to go through it, because we've identified what we consider the kind of fundamental pieces of successful training businesses. Having done this for almost 20 years, having worked with literally every type of fitness business under the sun from solopreneurs that sublease at a gym to nine-figure businesses. There are just certain things that are inherently true regardless of the type of business. And being able to see these benchmarks and saying, okay, am I, am I at the standard I need to be at to build the business that I want? Or are there opportunities to, to improve? And, and I think what's been great about this and, and what I wish I would have had early on in hindsight is there it's just pretty objective right like it's not you're not making up categories it's okay here's here the the client service and experience benchmarks or standards how do i do with you know the everything from programming to the other 165 to onboarding clients when it comes to my marketing, whether it's online lead generation or offline lead generation or referral generation, how am I doing? And I, I think that it allows you to make progress faster because you may be able to fix one thing and that has a cascading effect over everything else that you do because that one thing may have been the actual bottleneck in your business. And Man, that's that's a pretty powerful lever that you have at your disposal. If, oh, wait a minute. But I am getting a bunch of leads, but my conversion process or my follow-up process is pretty weak. And so it's making every lead 50% less valuable. And we're getting plenty of people into front-end offers or trials, but our client onboarding experience is weak. And so that's the bottleneck. We're not getting enough of those people who want to stay and they're not referring. So it's mitigating one of our most valuable lead sources. So I would tell you that I'm biased. I think this is a really cool tool that we've been able to put together and we put a lot of thought into. And I'm excited that we're able to facilitate it with people. And 
even modify the questions a little bit based on, okay, is this a solo business or is this a team driven business? Because there are certain questions that are specific to having employees or team members. And, but maybe zooming out a little bit, the bigger picture isn't necessarily our assessment internally. It's just one more reminder of all the good things that we do in training businesses, right? I mean, there are all these things that you're doing for clients, whether it's assessment or program design based on that assessment or the way that you're coaching people. And I've talked about this in previous episodes, how you're not trying to get them to fix six workouts in one day. You're building habits and building consistency that compounds over time. There are all these things that if you strip away the tactical piece of it and you just look at the underlying concepts that are just so valuable that if we would apply them to our own business, we'd be so much better off. And I think that is just 100% true with this idea of doing a periodic assessment. Now, I think we'll probably end up doing this periodic assessment with clients every 120 to 180 days, and we'll just have to see the cadence by which they'll be eager to do it and carve out the time to do it. But I would tell you every, at least every six months in your business, putting things under the microscope and looking at it and not just looking at, you know, the fires that you have to put out in the past week, not just saying, Hey, what feels urgent right now, but actually saying, okay, here's my business as a whole. And if I'm grading myself, How am I doing in each category? It's almost like your um, report card at the end of the grading period, just saying, how am I doing? So if there are areas I'm deficient, what do I need to work on so that my business is where I need to be? Because honestly, we're just not really educated or coached or instructed on that. When we go and start a business, I don't think that Most of the things that you're going to see when it comes to Facebook ads or Instagram ads in your feed, they're they're not talking about things like that. They're only talking about lead generation or, or new clients or revenue creation. They're not talking about the actually building a strong, sustainable, successful business. And that doesn't mean they're not valuable, but if you're doing an assessment, you can decide, hey, is that the stuff I need? Or... Is there something internally I need to work on differently? Is it a hiring thing? Is it a service thing? Are my systems operating the way they need to operate? Even foundationally, is my is the software I'm using the software I should be using? And I, I think that if you step back and you put your business under a microscope, you're going to find that there are some easier opportunities to improve than may be be the ones that you initially think about. They may not be the default answers to how to improve, but you're going to find that if you improve this thing and you improve that thing, and over time you're going to look up and you're going to say, man, I've got a really stronger, more successful business. And it was just fixing some things that maybe I didn't think about before. I know in my case, even to this day, two decades in, that still happens. There are things that you get so focused on the parts of the business that are important to you in the moment or that you enjoy, that it's easy to gloss over the other ones and miss some opportunities to become more profitable pretty quickly or to to improve retention or to maximize client experience, which turns into better reviews or better or a, a better revenue per client number or more referrals. So if you're not doing this sort of thing, and honestly, most of us aren't, and, and you'd be interested in going through the ideal business client assessment with us, just shoot me an email at patrigsby.com and put IBCA in the subject line and we'll get you set up and take you through it. And I think you'll, I think you'll enjoy what you learn. And I mean, the way that we've done it, I think this has been cool for our clients is just, there's a, a simple PDF printout that gives you all your scores and how you, how you rate in each category. So there's something tangible to go back and review. And it's a report card to help you build a better business. Thanks for listening to this episode of the fitness business school. Before you go, I have a quick announcement. 
One of the things that we've been doing with our current clients is taking them through this ideal business diagnostic. And really what it is, this checklist that allows you to pinpoint exactly what your business needs next so you can keep improving, keep growing, and build a business that you love to own. One that pays you well, well, one that allows you to have the impact you wanna have, and one that allows you to have a lifestyle that you truly enjoy. In this diagnostic, we walk through everything and we do an evaluation and can instantly pinpoint what you need to do next to build that business that you want. I'm going to extend this opportunity to get on with either me or my team and take you through this evaluation and fix your business's most vital needs fast. So if we take you through this, you're gonna be able to make those vital changes that you need to finally have what I call your ideal business. If you'd be interested in going through this entirely free, risk-free diagnostic with us and learn what you already have in place, what you're doing well, and where your greatest opportunities for rapid improvement are, just shoot me an email with diagnostic in the subject line to pat at patrigsby.com. Again, an email to pat at patrigsby.com with diagnostic in the subject line will get you scheduled and take you through this evaluation to help you build the business you want.